help. Um, so the first disease we have is coronary artery disease, also known as CAD. Uh, this happens when the coronary arteries, and these coronary arteries supply blood to the heart. So when they, they become thickened and hard, and hardening of them is called athro, no, arteriosclerosis. Um, so basically coronary artery disease, thick and hard and narrowed arteries. Um, and this is because of plaque in their walls. And this, this is an issue. Um, MI means myocardial infarction. That also means heart attack. Uh, if, you, if you have like thick, narrowed arteries, you're not getting enough blood flow, you're not getting enough oxygen, you have a heart attack. It sucks. Um, coronary ischemia. This is deficient oxygen. Ischemia means low oxygen. Uh, this is when your myocardial cells, your the muscular cells of your heart, aren't getting enough oxygen, um, and this cause and this is caused by you know when your coronary arteries are either constricted, so either they get tighter, they're either or they're either obstructed by a blood clot or a cholesterol plaque. So you get a blood clot in your coronary artery, or you can get a piece of plaque stuck in there, and that can cause ischemia, which is some some like heart tissue damage because you're not getting enough blood there, and if you're not getting enough blood, you're not getting enough oxygen. Um, but a heart attack is like when ischemia is like super bad. So if that makes sense. Um, since we're on myocardial infarction, this is happens when the coronary arteries are completely blocked. It causes ischemia, which means the heart muscles are deprived of oxygen. The heart muscles uh, then die like the cells in it die. And then this can be due to plaque and blood clots. Blood clots are also, can be called, known as a car coronary thrombosis. And cardiac tissue eventually degenerates and dies. And this is really awful uh, because your cardiac tissue does not regenerate. So what you have is what you get. And if it dies, then it dies. And then, yeah. So the next one is angina pectoris. Pectoris meaning like, so your pecs, if you have pecs, are like the muscles up in your chest. Um, angina or angina, whatever you want to call it, um, means pain. So when those, so this just means pain in your heart. So when, you know, when your heart, your myocardium, your muscles don't get enough oxygen, it's going to cause, and then it's going to die, okay? And if it dies, it's going to cause pain. And if it causes pain, well, now you have angina pectoris. So this can also be caused by um, stress. So if you're really stressed, you can get heart pain from it, uh, from just from stress. And then you can also have it if you have a temporary oxygen deficiency. Temporary oxygen, oxygen defici deficiency is also known as ischemia. So that's just with your cardiovascular system. This next one has to do with abnormal heart sounds. So you can have a heart murmur, which is, so these cusp, well, we have the valves, yeah. When those valves don't close up all the way, some of the blood, so when those ventricles contract, right, we like our AV valves closed, so blood doesn't go back into the atria. But if those cusps, if the tricuspid valve does not close, then blood will pump back into the atria when the ventricles close, and that's known as a murmur, is when blood kind of goes back into the atria. Uh, let's see, incomplete closure causes backflow of blood. So again, blood flows back into the atria, which we do not want. It needs to flow out of the ventricle. Uh, split, sound, split sounds, and I don't, she might ask something about heart murmur, but these other ones she may not. Um, so split sounds is non-simultaneous closure of pulmonary and aortic semilunar valves. So there's incorrect timing. So your semilunar valves are supposed to close at the same time. They're supposed to both close. But a split sound is like when one closes and the other one closes. It doesn't happen at the same time. So the sounds are split because, right, we hear the lup and we hear the dub, lub dub, lub dub. Sometimes you'll hear like lub, dub dub. Lub dub dub because the AV valves, the mitral and tricuspid, make that lub sound. So when those close, it makes lub. Then you have dub when the when the semilunar valves close. But if you don't have them closing at the same time, then you hear two sounds. 
split sounds. Lub, dub, dub. Lub, dub, dub. So it'll lub, dub, lub, dub. That kind of makes sense. That's what split sounds means. Which is great that we went through all of that because now it's kind of easier to explain. Like, this is why valves are important. Um, valvular stenosis. This has to do with um, the changes in the valve cusps. So cusps, your tricuspid, your semilunar valve, you know, your mitral valve, you know, all those cusps. Um, stenosis means hardening. So these cusp shapes change due to an infection or inflammation of the endocardium. So endocardium, like in the first worksheet we had, endocardium is the inside layer of the heart. So when that becomes infected or inflamed, because infection can lead to inflammation, it damages it. And um, it causes your cusps to uh, become hardened. And if they're hardened, then they're not, they're not flappy and flexible. We like flappy, flexible valves, right? Um, but so if there's stenosis, you hear that psh, you know, psh, 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 because they're just kind of like blood is flowing through, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, the next one is mitral valve prolapse. And this is when cusps of the mitral valves do not close completely. And I feel like, and I think they only have mitral valve prolapse. So like with the veins, this is with your valves, okay? Naturally in your veins, you know, you have your good valves and you have your bad valves. Mitral valve prolapse is when your mitral valve turns into a bad valve. Um, they don't close uh, properly. Uh, and then blood can be regurgitated back into the left atria. So when your ventricles contract, not only are they prolapsed and messed up, you also have blood pumping back. You know, you have that backflow again, kind of like with a murmur. But I think it's really saying mitral valve prolapse specifically because the vi mitral valve is on the left ve uh, ventricular side of the heart. It's on the left side. And the th special thing about the left ventricle is it has the thickest muscle. You know, it, it pumps the hardest out of all four quadrants of the heart. So your mitral valve is right here. So typically, I think your mitral valve is more affected, which is why it made it mitral valve prolapse specifically because of your thickened ventricular, left ventricle. So that, that makes sense, right? <laughs> um, the next one, you have a bundle branch, bundle branch block. And this is due to a bacterial infection of the aortic semilunar valve. Um, so the aortic semilunar valve is kind of down here. And when this becomes infected, uh, it spreads to the AV bundle. And when this happens, the electrical impulses that are supposed to, because remember, you got the AV bundle of Hiss right here. So when the infection spreads, that's where it goes to. Or actually, I think your AV bundle's here too. And you, yeah, OK, so that's what happens. Your AV, excuse me. So you, your aortic semilunar valve becomes infected. This infects the electrical portion, your AV bundle, which then can then go up your AV bundle of Hiss, which then can go to your SA node and just screw up your entire electrical system because of an infection in your valve, so to speak. Uh, so electrical impulses are not spread to the ventricles at the same time. This causes incorrect timing of heartbeats. So instead of getting your nice, you get, or something, just, it's all over the place. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I don't quite know what it, what it sounds like. But that's with your, you know, if your electrical system is messed up, then your heart rate's gonna be messed up. So that's, that's an issue. <laughs> so that's with heart sounds. The next one is arrhythmia. You have your tachycardia which is regular, but it's fast, okay? Um, this is caused by certain drugs, you can also, like, <laughs> like caffeine. Actually, tach actually, you get palpitations from caffeine, not, not so uh, tachycardia, but maybe you could. Um, actually, you, yeah, you could get some temporary tachycardia, I guess, is what you call it. Um, another way uh, you get tachycardia is from anemia shock, 
too much epinephrine, too many lions are chasing you, so your heart beats really, really fast. Normal, kind of normal things, but still not good for you. Uh, premature heartbeat, a beat that occurs before the expected cardiac cycle. So originates in ectopic regions of the heart. So this premature beat, so your SA node fires and your heart beats, and that's supposed to be normal. But a premature beat happens when your heart just beats before your SA node has a chance to. So ectopic areas of the heart could be like, maybe there's some nerve, maybe your nerves are just say, thinking the SA node is putting electric through them, but it's really not. So that's not very good because we, do, we don't want premature beeps. We want our hearts to, to relax so they can fill up with blood. Premature beats prevent that because pre means before, mature, yeah, so that's that. Uh, bradycardia, slow heartbeat. This causes low body temperature, or caused by low body temperature, drugs, parasympathetic stimulation, or malfunction of the SA node or the AV node. So, which is, you know, slow. So I think of a kid named Brady who runs very slowly. <laughs> There's someone like, like, <laughs> need to take like asthma or I don't know how those work, but yeah, so Brady runs slow is how I think of that. And then I just remember tachycardia is completely opposite. Uh, fibrillation is an uncoordinated chaotic contraction of small areas of the myocardium. Um, so the big takeaway with uh, fibrillations is atrial fibrillation is not life-threatening, but ventricular fibrillation is. Yeah. So with ventricular fibrillation, again, we want our we want our blood to, or we want our heart to relax. Atrial ventricular fibrillations when your ventricles are like they're just they're not filling, they're just beating. That's really bad because then we're not filling with blood. Atrial fibrillations when your atria are but it's not so much a big deal with your atria because it just needs to get from your atria to your ventricles. So atrial fibrillation, not a big deal, because you just need to get from your atria to your ventricles. Ventricular fibrillation, you gotta get that blood to your lungs, you gotta get that blood to the rest of your body. If you have ventricular fibrillation and they're not opening, they're not filling up enough, you're not getting nearly enough blood to the rest of your body. So V-fib is like life-threatening. Atrial fibrillation, not so much, because blood doesn't have very far to go, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Flutter, you can have atrial flutter or ventricular flutter, and this is regular rapid contraction due to the damaged myocardium. So flutter is kind of similar to fibrillation, fibrillation, um, but uh, I don't know how to explain flutter. It's kind of the same, but it's not as bad, <laughs> I guess. And then you have your AV block, so your atrial ventricular block. This has to do with your AV valves. So you have your semilunar valves at the bottom of the heart, your AV valves inside your heart. AV valves are your tricuspid and, and mitral valves, or your bicuspid valves. And your AV block is due to damage or infection of the AV node. And this can interfere with the inability, oh wait, sorry, AV block. So you have your atrial and ventricular valves, but your AV node is the one right under your SA node. So you have your SA node, your AV node goes down the bundle branches, bundle of Hiss, bundle branches. So your AV block is due to a damage or infection, um, which then if it, your nerve system is infected, then it's not gonna beat correctly. So that's the main takeaway with that. So uh, lastly, we have blood vessel disorder. So all of those other ones had to do with the heart. This has to do with your blood vessels, your veins, and your arteries. Um, just making sure. Atherosclerosis. This. Go on. For which one? Sclerosis. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I would like, I, I wouldn't like to cut someone open and see it, but yeah, you're right, it is pretty nasty, having the fatty accumulation, but it's also known as, what else is it? It's fatty, but it's also called cholesterol, 
cholesterol. Cholesterol, yeah. So you're right about with the fat, but cholesterol is what causes it. Yeah, that's our, I don't know if I wasn't asking it right. Um, but yeah, so when you have all that fat inside of your vessel, so we like our vessels being nice and open. And the lumen, the lumen is like that layer around it. So this is open, which we like. But the issue with atherosclerosis is when you have fat here, and this is your only opening you have because of all this fat accumulation inside of the lumen. And what's really bad is when that plaque gets hard. <laughs> so, but yeah, you're right about atherosclerosis. Um, the next one is an aneurysm, and an aneurysm I just think of like ballooning. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a sac that forms when pressure is too high, and it kind of like causes a portion of the heart or a portion of the artery to kind of like form a superficial. So if this is your aortic valve or artery or something kind of balloons because of all that pressure and then it can pop which isn't fun uh, arteriosclerosis is really bad because so atherosclerosis is with fat and cholesterol arteriosclerosis is when that fat becomes hardened um, and arteriosclerosis um, damages arteries because then they're not elastic. And if they're not elastic, this is really dramatic, but imagine like, uh, let's see, we like, we like our arteries like balloons, but if our arteries get like into like a glass kind of substance, then they burst, kind of what the idea is. And that's actually the issue with diabetes um, and having like high incidences of stroke is when you have arteriosclerosis and you're those hardened. You have hardened arteries. So because of plaque, because usually people who are typically diabetic also have other issues. But if they're healthy diabetics, then they'll, they're, they'll be pretty OK, maybe. you know. So, but that's that. Um, next one you have is flubitis. And whenever flub, so you hear flub, uh, flubotomy, it means vein. Itis means inflammation of your vein, and this is inflammation of the vein can cause by injury, infection, or surgery. So flubitis is you get some people with like spider veins or like um, varicose veins, which are like bad and painful. But flubitis is when those veins look like bumpy. You, you know, yeah, they look like really bumpy, and it's like, and this can be caused by injury, infection, or surgery because it because damage to that vein, you know. So it's like full of blood and it's just it's bumpy and it's probably painful too. Um, varicose veins, which are awful but not nearly as bad as flubitis. Um, irregular or abnormal dilation of superficial veins causes by gravity's downward pressure. And when you have the downward pressure, you know, yeah, your valves can be affected, but your, your veins can also get bigger because they stretch out. So that's why it's nice like if you work like a 12 hour shift you just lay against the wall for a little bit. You put your feet up on the wall, and you let you know you go on like YouTube or you're doing something, you know. But just have your feet up, and then it'll help drain all that blood. So, yeah, <laughs> I need to do this. I must do this. And then lastly, we have hypertension, and this is known as the silent killer. Uh, it doesn't cause direct symptoms, but it can lead to atherosclerosis, a TIA stroke, which is like a mini stroke, um, a CVA stroke, with this, which is known as cerebral vascular accident. So a TIA stroke, TIA, uh, I forgot what it stands for, but it's when you get a little bit of a blood clot in your brain and you have some symptoms of a stroke. So just say you get like the drooping and everything, but you go to the hospital and you recover from it. That's a TIA stroke. But the more TIA strokes you have, the more at risk you are for a real stroke. So with TIA strokes, the symptoms are temporary. And that's because maybe you passed, you know, maybe it, it, it got passed and then you're able to reoxygenate your brain. CVA stroke is bad because that can be caused by like a hemorrhage or it can be caused by a blood clot. But either way, if you're bleeding out in your brain 
or if you have a, a clot in your brain, um, you're not getting that oxygen. And if you're not getting enough oxygen, you have a CVA, and that becomes permanent when that brain tissue is dead. So TIA is when it's damaged. Uh, CVA is when it's dead. So that's, 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 that's usually when we think of stroke, we think of a CVA, cerebral vascular accident. Kind of the same thing, yeah. If you got a blockage and, well, the thing is with a stroke, it happens on one side of the body. So you have issues with swallowing, you have issues with walking, you, ha you may have like the left-sided paralysis or the right-sided paralysis. You may have like, you may become more impulsive or more cautious based on what side of the brain is affected. So with the stroke, you can live after that. But if you have a heart attack, your heart is what pumps blood everywhere. I, feel, I think you probably have a lower chance of living if you have a heart attack. So in terms of living, heart attack is worse. But in terms of like lifestyle, if you have a heart attack, yeah, your heart isn't as strong as it used to be, but you can still walk. You know, you can still think. But if you have a, a stroke, your lifestyle is going to be severe, much more affected. But you'll live longer, so to speak, if you get, you know, your diet in order and everything. Yeah, it has a pros and cons. Yeah, do you want yeah, don't get a heart attack, don't get a stroke. <laughs> that's what we got to do. Um, so yeah, that is, that's basically that. And the reason why hypertension is really bad is if you have a blood clot and you have hypertension, it's going to push that blood clot. You know, it's going to lodge it in there. If your veins are fragile, if they turn to glass, you know, if they're not like balloony anymore, and you have atherosclerosis and you have hypertension, it's going to bust those veins open. It's going to bust those vessels. So. Yeah, don't don't get hypertension. I know. Yeah, it's it's amazing how how we're still alive, <laughs> especially after like all this like American food and everything going around. It's like, how are you standing? You are a walking heart attack. <laughs> so, any questions on diseases? Okay.